All right, so much like the start of chapter three, this video here is a review of aspects from Math 9. And so, again, this isn't uh, directly related to a section of the textbook in terms of standard homework, but it is a review of things that hopefully sound familiar and then things that don't hopefully can make a bit more sense once we review it. I want to start with uh, simplifying these polynomials. So if I look at the one on the left, um, we would need to look for like terms. And so I have 3x and minus 2x are like terms. I have 5y and another y are like terms. And minus 2 and negative 3, or subtract 3, are all like terms. So put these all together. 3x minus 2x is 1x. Uh, 5y plus another y is 6y. Negative 2 take away 3 is negative 5. And so I have 1x plus 5y minus 5. Keep in mind, I can write these in any order as long as the coefficients are correct. For example, the x has to be a positive 1. I don't have to show the 1, but it has to be positive. The y has to have a coefficient of positive 6, and the constant has to be negative 5, not positive 5. Other than that, you can have these in any order. Looking over here, I can really find my like terms. 3x squared has no like terms. There's no other terms that are exactly the same as 3x squared. Uh, what about x? Well, negative 3x also is a like term with negative 2x. And those two are like terms. And that's it, actually. Notice this is the only term here that has x and y being multiplied to each other like that. This is the only term with just a y. This is the only term with a y squared. So the only like terms here are the minus 3x and the minus 2. Everything else is just as is. So I'm just going to copy everything else out, except for minus 3x and minus 2x I'll put together. So I'll write this as 3x squared minus 5x. Again, the order I write these doesn't really matter plus 5xy minus y plus y squared. Everything else, again, the only like terms here were minus 3x and minus 2x. To be like terms, they have to have the same variables to the same powers. And that's not the case for anything else. All right, so next, let's simplify these. All right, so for the first expression here, 5x plus 2 plus x minus 4, the brackets actually don't mean anything. Uh, they're not doing anything, so I can just start to Combine like terms right away. 5x plus 7x is 12x. And plus 2 plus negative 4. So uh, it's positive 2 plus a negative. Well, adding a negative, same as subtracting. So it's really, I can think of just 2 take away 4, which is negative 2. And I'm done. I have to be a little bit more careful when I'm subtracting these two binomials. If you look to the right, it's the exact same question, except I'm subtracting 7x minus 4. I've got to be a little bit more careful. Uh, in this case, uh, the brackets around 7x minus 4 I can't just ignore. And that's because I'm subtracting all of this. And the key idea is I'm subtracting a negative. And when you subtract a negative, same as adding. So uh, what I recommend, and hopefully sounds familiar, it's pretty common, is to imagine there being a 1 right here and distributing the minus 1. And so if I do that, first I get 5x plus 2 minus 7x plus 28. And so, again, if we're a little bit too quick, it's very common to have a negative 28 right here. But again, I'm subtracting negative 4. Sorry, where do I have a 28 from? What is going on there? It's a positive. Sorry, it's positive 4. That's it. Uh, the common mistake is not putting a 28. It's putting, again, missing that positive in front of the 4. But in effect, we are subtracting negative 4, same as adding 4. Other than that, any like terms here? I got 5x minus 7x, that's negative 2x. And positive 4 plus 2 is plus 6. Ooh, that came out really dark. Hmm. My digital ink got a little messy there. Anyway, so let's look at the next pair. OK, and again, I'll focus on these. Notice the only difference between these two, like before, is in the one on the left, I'm adding. The one on the right, I'm subtracting. And so similar to what I mentioned before, the one on the left, these brackets aren't really doing anything. I can effectively just ignore them and just combine all my like terms together. So x squared plus 2x squared is 3x squared. 2x, that's it. There's no other x's, so plus 2x. And then right here, minus 2 take away 4 is negative 6. Like before, I have to be a little bit more cautious with 
when I'm subtracting these, like I see right here. And so like before, I'm going to recommend just putting a little 1 right here. Imagine there being a coefficient of 1. I mean, that really, it's the same thing. Subtracting 1 times something is the same as just subtracting that, and then distributing that negative 1. That's it. Over here, I still have x squared plus 2x minus 2. Over here, I have minus 2x squared plus 4. And again, let's look for like terms. x squared minus 2x squared is negative 1x squared. I don't really need the 1, so I'll write it lightly, but I don't really need that 1 there. But I need the negative in the front. Uh, plus 2x, nothing else. It's like terms, so plus 2x. And finally, minus 2, minus 4. Plus, sorry, positive 4. Negative 2 plus 4 is positive 2. I mean, really, we've been using so many of these same ideas working in, with our linear equations in the first unit. Um, the main difference here is that we're looking at things that are not just linear, but the same ideas, distributing. We did lots of this stuff earlier on in the course. Okay, that's essentially adding and subtracting. What about when I'm multiplying or dividing? Well, let's look at this. I have negative 2x times 7x squared. Well, I can think of this as negative 2 times 7, which is negative 14. And then I can focus on the variables. x times x squared is x to the power of 3. And I'm all done. Uh, and so... Essentially, I'm just, when I'm looking at this, I'm choosing to multiply, in this case, my coefficients first, and then my x is second. Because again, when you're multiplying, if all you're doing is multiplying, you can multiply in any order. Same idea here. I got a lot of stuff going on. Let's first just multiply negative 2 and 7. So again, negative 14. Next, let's multiply x by x squared. So x times x squared is x to the power of 3. And finally, I have y times y, which is y squared. And so I can write these, again, these three factors. I can write them in any order, but we usually put them in. We usually put the coefficient first, and, and then the variables in alphabetical order. But we don't have to. I don't have to put the x cubed before y squared. But I will, because I'm boring. And now let's go right here. Now I'm dividing these polynomials. So in the same idea, though, let me first focus on the coefficients. Negative 15 divided by 5 is negative 3. Next, x squared divided by x. I could use exponent laws, um, or I can just realize this means I have x times x in my numerator. I have 1x in my denominator. I can just hopefully see that those x's are going to cancel out, and all I'm going to have left is 1x. And ideally, as we go on, we can do this faster and faster without having to use exponent laws. And then here, I have y divided by y. Well, y divided by y is 1. So I could put times 1, but it's kind of silly because that doesn't do anything. So I'm done right there. Let's look right here. I got division and, you know, I got fractions that are being multiplied to each other. Essentially, I have division and multiplication. So I have a choice. I'm going to go just numerators and then denominators, right? And multiplying fractions, if you want, you can just multiply your numerators together. So my numerator. I have 14 times x to the power of, sorry, 14 times x times y to the power of 3. And in my denominator, I have y times 2 times x. I'm going to put the coefficient first, so 2 times x times y. I can write them in any order. Now, this question is just like the previous one. I'm going to focus on the coefficients. 17 divided by 2, sorry, 17. I need to go home. 14 divided by 2 is 7. Looking right here, x divided by x just cancels out. So times 1, I don't need to do that. And finally, I have y to the power of 3 divided by y to the power of 1. In the end, uh, it, again, imagine there's three y's in the numerator, one y in the denominator. One cancels out from both. I have just two y's left in the numerator. A fast way of showing that is to just cancel this out. Oh, don't do that. A fast way to do that is to just realize that's going to cancel out, and that 3 is going to change to a 2. So I have 7y squared. And lastly, I have a combination of these things. So distributing with multiplying and various things. And so these are the, I have two and then two more after this. So I want to simplify these, which really means I want to use the distributive property. And again, we've done this lots in the course, just not with this many exponents. And so 5x times 8 is 40x. 5x times negative 2 
is negative 5x cubed. And then I'm done. But again, we've got to be careful. x times x squared is x cubed. It's really easy to miss that power of 3. Uh, let's go to this one here. Again, I want to distribute this. So first, I'm going to go 5 times 8, which is 40. Then I'm going to go x times nothing else, so just x. And then y times y is y squared. Okay, that's the first part. Then I have, again, that part. And so this is 5 times x times y times x squared. That's going to be minus 5x cubed times y. Again, the only thing I'm really doing is going x times x squared, which is x cubed. And the last two are dividing. And again, all of this was learned in uh, Math 9, theoretically at least. Uh, and again, we did some complex things in Math 9. And so now I'm dividing, whereas before I was multiplying. I'll focus on this one. Uh, one thing I could do is I can just break this up into two separate fractions. Instead of thinking about 14x squared minus 6x all being divided by 2x, I can think of it as 14x squared divided by 2x minus 6x divided by 2x. I can always do this if I want. And now I can look at these kind of separately. So if I look at 14x squared over 2x, I can see 14 over 2 reduces to 7 over 1. And I can see x squared divided by x, one of my x's will cancel out from the numerator and the denominator. So what's left in that first term? Just 7x. Takeaway, same idea over here. 6 over 2, same as 3 over 1, or just 3. And then x divided by x is 1, it cancels out. And so all I have left over there is minus 3 times 1 divided by 1, which is minus 3. And again, ideally, we can become more fluent with this and become quicker with it. Last one, same idea. I'm going to break this up into two fractions, both being divided, in which we're dividing by 2xy. All right. So again, instead of thinking of it as the whole numerator being divided by 2xy, I'm thinking of each term in the numerator being divided by 2xy. It's always the same thing. So now I can kind of, in my mind, look simpler to me. So I have 14 over 2, 7 over 1, so equals 7. I have x squared divided by x. Well, one of my x's will cancel out from the numerator and the denominator, so I have just a single x left. And then I have y cubed divided by y. Well, one of my y's will cancel out from the numerator and the denominator, but I still have two y's left. All right, same idea here. 6 over 2, same as 3 over 1, or just 3 whole. And my x's cancel out entirely, and my y's cancel out entirely. So all I have left there is minus 3, and I'm done. So I did these quite quickly because, again, you can pause the video and look around, but um, you know, this covers the, the beginnings of what we really need to do working with polynomials. And again, there's actually a lot of pretty complex stuff in the Math 9 portion. With that said, the homework for this uh, is optional, but again, we are going to build upon this. So if basically, if I went through this and you were <laughs> not so sure, uh, I would definitely take a look at page 140 to 141 in the textbook. It has a get ready section. And all these are actually just review of some key parts from Math 9 or the previous course. And so in this case, I highly recommend you look at at least some of the questions that I'm putting down here. The stuff we're going to do in this course goes well beyond this. And so if we don't have you know, a, some sort of confidence with the basics of what I kind of covered today, uh, you're not going to have any confidence at all going, going forwards. Okay, But this is not directly part of this course, hence I'm not going to put these on a homework quiz. I'm going to put more difficult things on a homework quiz, most likely, right from the grade 10 course. All right, so that finishes this review lesson.